What it is, though? It's your boy Crook, LDB Team 100. We in it, sure. Today we got another reaction video. Now, if you guys don't know, I did drop a video on it. Jalen Brown just got a bag. Jalen Brown just got a bag bag. Five years, 304 milli. That man got over a quarter of a billion dollars. Feel me? It's crazy. But this is a video. I ain't gonna lie. He looks kind of crazy. <laughs> he looks kind of crazy right now. And I just, I, I, I literally just turned the video on. He looks, he, he looks crazy. This is from Sporting Logically. This is the Jalen Brown contract is weird. Let's get right to the video, y'all. If I put a $300 million NBA contract in front of you right now, would you sign it? I know I would. So the question is, why did it take so long for the Boston Celtics and Jalen Brown to come to an agreement on what is now the richest contract in the history of the NBA? And of course, the easiest answer to that is there's all kinds of little details that need to get figured out within a contract. It's not just the money. It's not just the years. There's player option stuff. There's trade kicker stuff. I get all of that. But this particular situation is getting a little bit weird because we've had multiple players already this offseason sign max and super max contract extensions with their teams Anthony Edwards LaMelo Ball but Jalen Brown Tyrese is Oliver. a really interesting case here because the there's been Sabonis. rumors the entire season that he might not want to be in Boston long term but all that stuff went away the moment that he made an all-nba team after the season because as soon as he made the all-nba team he became eligible for, eligible for a super max which meant that Boston was going to be able to offer him way more money than any other team around the league but the thing that's weird about this is he could would sign that contract and still not be a Boston Celtic a year from right now. Now I've talked about this in a few other videos recently, but there's definitely for the most part he is bro. right now in NBA free agency, which is that players because after the salary cap that's coming up, bro. I ain't gonna lie, it's gonna be hella hard to get this contract. They're worrying about which team they play for later. Basically, now when you sign a contract with a team, you're really just signing the contract with the NBA in general. You're making no promises to actually complete that contract with your team, which is fair, right? Because all the other you know all the franchises around the league are constantly trading guys around, not necessarily keeping them on their team for the entirety of the contract and so the players are doing the same they're just waiting it out and figuring hey i can just get the maximum amount of money from in this case boston and then i can just request a trade later but the brown thing is is even more interesting than that because the super max extension and y'all want to know what's crazy players get credit it's crazy because players get criticized the most for this bro there's been so much talk about how it's bad for the league again austin rivers Austin Rivers. There's been so much talk about how it's bad for the league that players force their way out of contracts. Um, James Harden, Ben Simmons, just to name a few. Damian Lillard now requests a trade. People don't realize teams do this all the time, bro. Now that the players actually have a say into where they go, now it's a problem. Bro, it is what it is. Some players just got that pull. And that's one thing that a lot of people have to realize. It's not the whole NBA, bro. Some players have that pull. If LeBron James say, I don't want to play for the Lakers no more, I want to go to wherever Bronny go, he's going to go wherever he wants to go. If Jason Tatum decides, I don't want to play for Boston anymore, I want to play for somebody else, no one is going to stop him. It's only certain players that have that type of pull. I'm not going to say that it's bad for the league, but it's a problem when they do it. But no, no, I'm sorry. It's cool when they do it. It's a problem when I do it. See what I mean? that he made the All-NBA team and now he's going to get the Supermax as with recording of this video. He has not signed it, but I still expect him to. And it's pretty obvious that within a year, within two years, he could just want to be on a different team. One of the teams certainly to keep in mind would be Houston. Now that they have Ime Udoka, that would give him the opportunity to go and be a true number one option elsewhere. And of course, they have plenty of assets to trade back to Boston if they're interested in moving Jalen Brown elsewhere. It's just kind of always been a bit of a weird and a contentious situation uh, between him and 
the team, whether he does or doesn't want to be there, whether he wants to be that number one option somewhere else. But the other thing to me that's weird is Jalen Brown's definitely worth a max contract. He's definitely a max contract player. When you make all NBA teams, that's just how it goes. Um, but I'm not sure I'd want to be the team paying Jalen Brown the max because we've always seen him in this, this ecosystem in Boston where they've been successful as a team. They've had plenty of talent. They've had good coaches. And well, I guess with the exception of this most recent season with Joe Mazzulla, depending on your opinion of him. Um, but we've never really seen him outside of that structure, obviously, at the NBA level. And it took him a little bit to become a big time NBA player. And I'm curious what number one option Jalen Brown would look like as a primary creator he's not outstanding he has a lot of turnovers can't really dribble the ball that well and i'm wondering if boston feels the same way maybe just a little bit about giving him this much money they know they're gonna have to give him a ton of money but maybe that's why the contract negotiations have taken so long is that they're trying to put some other stuff in there to maybe try and lower the number overall whether it be incentives whether it be you know whatever the case may be and they're also probably anticipating that he does eventually want to request a trade and go somewhere else and so that's why the trade kicker stuff gets really really interesting for him i, I want to make it clear Jalen Brown is an incredibly talented player but if you put him on another team as a number one option unless he is a you know a, a top tier all defense level player and is truly a top tier two-way guy I don't think that offensively by himself he's good enough to be the, the number one player on a championship team I just don't and when you're paying someone what is uh, you know over the lifetime of the contract gonna be close to or exceeding 300 million dollars especially in this new era we're going into with the second apron and teams being especially con hold on let me do the math bro Five years, 304. Now, I know his contract don't exactly line up with this, but I just want to do the math. Three divided by 304. Hold up. Hold up. Let's do 304 divided by five. Bro, this man might be getting 60 mil a fucking year, bro. That is crazy. About and I know that's probably not how his contract is sure broke up, that but that guy is good enough bro. to be at least that's close to a number one option a championship team. Now, the counter to that would be when they made the finals against Golden State, he was the best player in the series. Like Jason Tatum wasn't that good. Some of the other role guys weren't that good. And Jalen Brown was consistently aggressive. He was getting to the rim and he looked really, really good. And so he's going to have a ton of value for Boston no matter what. I think they're going to retain him. He's going to be on the team this upcoming season. But next offseason, I think all bets are off. Unless they win the title, this could be the last season. I feel like we've said this so many times, but it really could be the last season of the Jalen Brown Jason Tatum thing, which introduces an interesting possibility for the future for Boston, because if you do trade him to, for example, Houston, let's say he wants to go to a team where he's the number one option, you're not getting a, a true star in return for Jalen Brown. You're getting draft compensation, you're getting young players, and what does that do for you around Jason Tatum? Wow, and to Jason me, what Tatum. that sets up is a right. season where there is a lot on the line here for Boston. I think the only way that they could prevent Jalen Brown from requesting a trade in a year, in two years, like without question, he will not do it, is if they win the title. And they're certainly good enough to do it. I just don't know if the way that this team is put together post Kristaps Porzingis trade, and of course with Joe, Joe Mazzulla as the head coach, I don't know if they're built to be the favorite in the Eastern Conference. I think certainly they have some advantages over other teams, but that would be the real concern for me. And all this comes down to, to me, a very interesting season upcoming for Boston. Not only with Jalen Brown's contract extension, not only with what they're going to do in the conference to try and win the title, but how those two things connect, and then what the future of Jalen Brown looks like if he does eventually end up on a different team. Now going back to Hugh Houston, really quickly, the, the less talked about part of this to me is whether or not the Rockets would actually want to trade for Jalen Brown potentially in a year or in two years in exchange for not only the contract that he's on, but all the assets that they would have to give up to Boston. Is Jalen Brown the guy that you've been waiting around for to accelerate your rebuild? They were at least relatively interested in James Harden this offseason, decided to go in a different direction. They've got Van Fleet. They've got Dylan Brooks. You can add Jalen Brown to that. And of course, you have all the young guys, Jalen Green, Jabari Smith. But is Jalen Brown the guy that you want? Again, I like Jalen Brown as a player, but does that elevate you to where you want to be? And is know, there bro. really a lot of value on that contract? I think all of those are really interesting questions because you would just assume, of course, the Rockets would want to bring in someone as talented as Brown. But when you consider the cost in terms of the contract and the assets, I do think that it's at least a conversation. And this is pretty rare because typically when we have guys, you know, potentially requesting a trade or maybe wanting out, it's because their team isn't that good or they don't really see the upside moving forward, thinking about Bradley Beal, Damian Lillard, or things just become untenable like Kevin Durant, right? Uh, in Brooklyn wanting to leave there. But a team that's been 
as successful as they have, largely as a result of the player that could potentially request a trade in Jalen Brown, a team that's been to the conference finals a ton, a team that's had a lot of playoff success, a team that was in the finals two seasons ago. That kind of situation with that player requesting a trade is incredibly rare. And what I, what feels like a, a time in the NBA where there's a lot of unprecedented things happening, second apron, players requesting trades after signing big contracts at an unprecedented rate, it, it feels like this could be maybe the strangest thing that could happen. A guy that could have that much success and still just want to be somewhere else. Maybe that's what it comes down to. Is like he's he's been in Boston for his entire professional career. He's a completely different person than he was when he was drafted. And he'd like to be elsewhere. He'd just like different experiences. He'd like to test himself as a number one option. Something that we've seen with other players in the past. And the first step for him was always to get as much money as possible. In this case, the true Supermax and then go from there. And it's just a new era that we're entering into in the NBA where you sign the contract and that means nothing in terms of your long-term future and prospects of sticking with that team that you signed the deal with. So let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think, where you think Jalen Brown is going to end up. Do you think he's going to get traded next offseason or the following? Or maybe you think that the Boston Celtics are going to win the title this year and he's going to stick around for the entirety of his career and be a Celtic and we'll just continue to make content about this. Always thinking maybe he's going to be on the move and actually won't be. Let me know down in the comment section below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. I'm going to be honest. If I'm Houston... I might take Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown and Vlad Vliet. With Jalen Brown's your number one option, Vlad Vliet running the offense. Sounds kind of intriguing a little bit. Now it just all depends on how they run up the lineup. You still got Jalen Green. So, well, well, actually, no, actually, you would have to trade. I'm pretty sure they would trade Jalen Green. And Kevin Porter Jr. probably maybe some more picks to get Jalen Brown. So never mind. But Blanville and Jalen Brown, I don't I don't know if that would get it done. That's crazy. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I love you guys. I'm gonna see y'all in the next one. Peace out.